Yo, so for the last month, I've been daily driving the 14 inch M3 MacBook, but from the title, I've been incredibly disappointed. After spending $2,000 on this machine, I was excited to have what I thought would be an even bigger powerhouse than my 16 inch M1 Pro, but it's just not the case and I'm super confused. If you're looking to buy a new MacBook, you'll wanna watch this beforehand. So the MacBook I bought was the base model M3 Pro 14 inch. This is my second Silicon MacBook Pro and given my experience with the first, I was really excited to see what kind of performance this updated chip would bring. I again decided to go with the Pro over the Max chip, mainly because in my last two years of use, there really hasn't been many times that I was wishing for more power. While of course there was that occasional hiccup or slow down, 99% of the time, it handled my workflow exceptionally well. I did assume that this Pro model chip two generations later would be a decent performant improvement, but that really wasn't the case. So my 16 inch Mac had a 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, and 16 gigabytes of memory. With this new Mac, it has an 11 core CPU, 14 core GPU, and 18 gigabytes of memory. What's really weird, and if someone knows the exact reason Apple did this, please let me know down below, but there is two less GPU cores than on the M2 Pro. I didn't think this would have had a huge effect on my workflow with video, but I guess it has. Being on the base model with the 512 gigabyte SSD, these lower storage options do tend to be slower than the higher capacity ones, and after I had ran some tests as for my initial impressions video, this is still the case. Though in day-to-day -day use, loading up apps hasn't felt any slower, and using the Mac in general has not felt sluggish. At this point, I have about 100 gigabytes of free space, and I am starting to regret going with such a small internal drive, because pretty much any project that I want to work on does have to be offloaded onto an external SSD. This base model retails for $2,000, and for an extra $400, you get a 1TB SSD, a 12-core CPU, and much better 18-core or GPU. Now, I think the price jump for just more storage is insane, but I am starting to wonder whether going for this slightly updated model would have been a better choice. It does still have 18 gigabytes of memory, but I don't think it's a super high priority update. In 2023, 16 is probably the bare minimum you should go with, but macOS does quite a good job that even with a few windows open, I don't notice any real hiccups. I would honestly put RAM on the very bottom of the list of things worth upgrading, as unless you have all that extra cash to spare and a pretty heavy workload, you're much better served saving that money for CPU or storage upgrades. Now, on a lighter note, the design of this machine is fantastic. The chassis itself is unchanged from the last two years, but I don't think that's a bad thing. There's really nothing wrong with this current design. Though, the new space black color has been one of my favorite things about this Mac. Before I actually picked it up, I was a little worried whether I'd like it because I've only ever used silver Macs. But I can say that this finish is stunning. It just has a classy and luxurious feel to it. Unfortunately, it is only available on the Pro and Max chips, but in my opinion, it's the best color Apple has ever made. It's unfortunately not really black, more so of a darker gray, and depending on how light hits it, it'll change pretty drastically. I do love it though, and it goes quite well with the all black EDC I'm building. When I first started using it, it was picking up a small amount of fingerprints, which kind of worried me as I thought it would get really bad over the month, but honestly, it picks up such a small amount and they're very hard to see. This is definitely not another midnight situation. Longtime subscribers will know that I was a big fan of the 16 inch Mac, but to be honest, I don't know that I'll ever go back. I do use my Mac docked 80% of the time, so it really doesn't make sense paying so much more for that larger screen. When I do use it on the go or at home on the couch, I just love the compact build. Having still so much power in such a small machine doesn't get old. The only downsides are that with a smaller chassis, you do have smaller speakers and a smaller trackpad. The latter has been a bigger issue for me. I'm always finding that I reach the end of the trackpad when dragging around a window or copying text. Enabling three finger drag has been a must and also just makes things a little easier. That issue and the smaller screen real estate for me is honestly worth the trade off. Taking it on the go and having it easily slip into a bag is too convenient for me. I do plan to travel a lot more within the next couple of years, so the 14 inch will remain my go to. So, for performance, the main metric I was looking to see an improvement in was my video export time. I don't want to go too deep into synthetic benchmarks because I don't really feel like they mean that much, but for my tests, Geekbench showed a 
26% increase in single core CPU performance and a 13% increase in multi-core performance. Then in Cinebench, it showed a 50% increase in GPU performance. I think we can agree that with these numbers, you would expect there to be some amount of tangible improvement. So testing my latest video, which was nine minutes long, and it wasn't a super crazy edit. It just had some 4K 30 FPS footage, some overlay color corrections and text effects. The M3 Pro rendered this video in five minutes and 38 seconds. Then bringing that same project over to the M1 Pro and rendering it, it finished in five minutes and 38 seconds. I ran this multiple times and on different videos, but both of the machines were rendering in the same exact amount of time, plus or minus one to two seconds. This is super confusing, because the benchmarks say there should at least be some sort of improvement, but even on the latest software update, I'm getting the same exact results. I don't know if this is just a resolve issue, but regardless, for my workflow, I'm really not seeing any improvement. I've now edited four videos on this machine, and honestly, each time, I get a lot more hiccups than I ever did with the M1. There are times where I'll zoom in on the timeline and it freezes, something that never happened before. Over the last month, my workflow on here has basically just been video editing with a small amount of photo editing. I did some light programming, but not enough to know how well iOS development works on here. So for what I've used the Mac for, I've not been super impressed. I will be keeping the machine just because I love the smaller form factor, but I'm kind of considering returning it and then going for the upgraded model because for $400, it seems like it may be worth the upgrade. In every other area though, the machine has met my expectations. Battery life has been quite good. I do mostly use it docked, but any time that I was working around my apartment, it never died on me. Luckily, really any Silicon Mac is going to be very impressive when it comes to battery life. It's not something you'll have to make a decision over. I also haven't heard the fans a single time, and while editing for a couple hours straight, it only gets a little warm. So having used the new M3 Pro MacBook the last month, what I can say is I don't think it's worth the upgrade if you're coming from either the M1 or M2. From my experience, I'm getting essentially the same performance as the M1 Pro, which still to this day is an incredibly powerful chip. If you're in the market for a MacBook Pro, I highly recommend going for an M1 or M2 chip because getting it refurbished, you can save several hundred dollars off retail. These machines hold up incredibly well over time, and I can see most people not needing to upgrade for at least five years. So I hope this video has been helpful if you have your eyes on a new MacBook, but of course, if there's anything else you want to know, just let me know down in the comments. That said, I've been Cole, and I appreciate you guys for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed, as well as follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Take care.